You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Thank you for joining me again. Yeah, you keep doing it. Maybe you're just a big Joel McHale fan. fan. I can't speak, Ryan. Fan. 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 Yeah. I'm doing air horns. Fan. Yeah. Fan. 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 Hey, uh, thanks for uh, making this podcast yours. It's always a blast to have Joel McHale in here. He's a funny, funny guy. Very uh, filled with gratitude. Comedy. Mm-hmm. It's always a treat, and uh, I think you're going to really enjoy it. Some uh, th- things, if you just go to my Instagram, at the Michael Rosenbaum, and go on the link tree, you'll see what I'm doing. Cons, um, going to uh, D.C. in March mm. with Tom Welling, doing a Smallville Nights and autographs. Uh, it's going to be a big con, awesome con. <laughs> Literally, it's called awesome con, right? Really? Yeah. Funny. If I have a con, would it be called rad con? Rosen con? Rosen con. <laughs> Rosen con. Uh-huh. Um, but the link tree has my I'm on cameo if you want a birthday wish or something. And uh uh the inside of you online store. We've got uh smallville ship keys, Lexima scripts, and uh new shirts with my face on it, if that's what you really want. They're really cool. Uh sunspin.com, that's my band. We play shows usually every month, and uh there's a lot of good stuff there, good merch. The best tumblers, I think, around are uh sunspin tumblers. You might want to have a look at those. And you could book the band. You could also uh, get a Zoom with me. And uh, and most importantly, Patreon. If you want to join Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash inside of you uh, to support the podcast. Give back. Uh, if you like this podcast and want to keep it going, it's, it's you guys that really help. So I thank all my patrons for giving me love and support. And uh, Rosie's Puppy Fresh Breath is out there. It's on Amazon. If you want it, if you want your dog's breath to not smell like crap. Pup, Rosie's Puppy Fresh Breath. Um, you can see that on the link tree on my Instagram as well. And uh, it's great. It's odorless, tasteless, and the dog's breath. My dog's breath are, is just phenomenal. And sometimes Charlie eats his own poop, and then he has some of that, and it uh, it kills it. <laughs> kills that bacterial. But lucky you got it. That's for sure. Um, also, a big shout out to some uh, nonprofits that I work with. I'm on the board for um, the animal... Um, arm it's called arm animal rescue mission and my friend Shearer runs that and uh animal rescue mission.org or dot com um also echoes of hope.org for foster youth if you want to help out and um food on foot.org for the homeless situation that is just intense as hell isn't it mm-hmm. but uh a lot of good stuff we're going to get into this podcast now. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. And uh, we have had we have some great ones coming up. Nicholas Holt, who's going to be the new Lex Luthor. So you get to hear us talk. And that's uh, that's going to be happening very soon. And some old school actors coming along the way. Mm-hmm. Billy D. Williams, Lando Calrissian. Wait till you hear that one. Or John Reese davies or Edward Furlong's coming up. Uh, a lot of great ones. So we really appreciate you to to uh, subscribe, write a review, and support the podcast. You doing all right? You going to therapy? I'm doing all right. I'm going to therapy. Ah, yes, man. <laughs> if only I can get my father into therapy. That would be just sweet. He I love my dad, it. but he won't go either. Yeah. That's fine. Old school, huh? It's that old school mentality. I don't need it. I don't need it. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Uh, let's get inside of Joel McHale. It's my point of view. You're listening to Inside of You. Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of you with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. We're rolling. Uh, audio. Hi, welcome to Leaf Blower with yeah. Michael there's some Rosenbaum. leaf blowers in the back, but we were just getting into such gorgeous conversation. Yeah, that uh, we were talking about uh, the fact that Johnny Cash uh, did a Folgers commercial. Yeah, back in the '90s. Thanks for filling me in on that. Yeah, it was uh, surprising. I was like, wow, Johnny must be out of money or mm. he's doing a favor. You know, he, he, maybe Folgers was paying him a great deal of money. Yes. I, I mean, if Folgers said five million, Johnny. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Salvador Dali did a Alka-Seltzer I had in the 70s. And I was like, yeah, do it, man. 
He was a, he was a, he early, he, you know, when, you know, remember when it wasn't cool to oh yeah be on commercials or be, you couldn't be in movies and TV at the yeah. same time. I went on for until probably I'd say 15 years ago. Yeah. You, it couldn't, couldn't make the crossover. Couldn't and, happen. And, and the Michael J. Foxes were very rare. They're like, oh, he made it. Yeah. He's a movie star and he's doing uh talk radio. What was that show? Spin City. Well, he had done the movies before that. Right. I think. Yeah. And then he did. And they're like, whoa, actor on a TV uh, show, movie actor. And then you couldn't, they're like, oh, you can't be on a game show. You can't, you can't be an actor and be a game show host. And then <laughs> Look, along, along came Snoop Dogg and, uh, yeah, well, is that who Jamie, did it? well, Jamie Foxx and, uh, what's it? Um, no, uh, the rock did it. Like when the rock did it, people were like, oh, anybody can do it now. Well, you do everything. I, I just don't say no. You d- <laughs> is that that's, true? That's the difference. It's like you do everything. No, no, no. I just never turn it down. I don't believe you. I don't believe that you say that you don't say no sometimes. I don't believe. No, I do say no sometimes. But yeah. when money's involved. But, yeah, and I was like, how much time? Oh, yeah, great. And I, I would do that in a heartbeat. You yeah. do features as an actor. You host shit. You do game shows. You do. I mean, you do everything. Uh, Improv. I mean, again, it, I ju- it's just out of desperation. I don't believe it is. I think you're a uh, quadruple millionaire. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. Well, let's see. I have. Four point two billion dollars. Oh, okay. And I don't know why I keep working because I have this eighty foot. Well, I've four. I have a fleet of yachts. Do you think the Nina, you were, the Pinta, and the, the Santa Maria? Santa Maria. I couldn't name the rest of them. There's only one more. There's three. That would be the three. The Johnson, Nina, Santa Maria, the Mike and Pinta. The Mike, uh, the, but the, let me ask you. Yeah. If you had four point two billion dollars, you wouldn't do anything like this podcast. I absolutely would do this podcast. So you enjoy doing all these things, or you wouldn't do them? Uh, I really do enjoy them. I don't. I remember thinking uh, when I, I read this interview with Marlon Brando, and he goes, "If I had to do it all again, <laughs> I would just have a man come to my door with a bag of money each week and say, here you are. Thank you very much.'" And then I would say, "No, thank you." And that was the. And I was like, "Wait, so you wouldn't have done any of this? You just want a bag of money? You just want a bag of money?" Which kind of said, like, uh, maybe he's not enjoying himself at this point in his life. I, yeah. I, do you ever look at actors? I was really high yesterday. I did the show, and I had to get high during it, and I still have some highness. You had to? Yeah, you had to get high because it was a show that you tell a story. <laughs> oh. of, it's like Drunk History Monk. I see. Monk. Dr- Drunk History Monk. Month. It is? It's like Drunk History oh, Month. but What's it's, it called? It's I can't, t- I can't say it because it hasn't come out yet. Oh, okay. But it's uh, – so other, you know, actors – do it and you tell a story like mine might have been about something in history which i know you're a history buff and yeah. so they give you the night before they give you like i already said this but five pages of dialogue or five pages of like a monologue like this but, is what you but you know. just have to know the story just know the story don't worry about yeah. anything else so i was like oh i was freaking out and then i got really they got me really high they have like a medic on set i talked about this a but anyway medic. yeah and they, they have a pot guy and then there's the water we're holding on that's just me urinating on your couch. Jesus. I you have, have real, some powerful urine. It's um it's a liberal stream. It is. Do you do you pee a lot? Do you drink a lot of water? Do you I think water is water. important? No. <laughs> I mean, do you really think people put such, No, they, I think it's such stupid. weight on water. That I you have to drink all this. Make sure you drink it. Doesn't it doesn't make any sense because human beings somehow survived without drinking two gallons of water a day. It's it's just, it was not, it was not viable for human beings to drink all the water they want us to drink each day. Yeah, And it seems like it would wear out our prostates or whatever, like with all this water <laughs> passing through. And I just don't know when they like, what did he die of? Not enough water. Yeah, I mean, he was hydrated, but he should have had another gallon a day. Yeah. I drink a lot of water. Like when I exercise, I drink a Probably a couple because you're liters. thirsty and you want to stay hydrated. I don't drink, but I was just like, well, I gotta get through all this water today. I hope I make it. <laughs> and then I gotta hand it to the way they market those bottles, where it's like, here we go, and then it says you're getting there. This is instead of listing like how much water you're drinking. It's encouraging you, like almost done, and now <laughs> bladder explosion. We've got we've got alkaline in this water. This is gonna do something that it, it's like. What if have, you didn't live? Any of this? Yes. As long as you're talking about that. As, again, we're talking about this water. is because Michael has he's violating all sorts of California Gardeners. laws. No, they can water things. Well, not the way they used to. Well, don't you get know. an extra water bill? 
Uh, my water bill's decent. It's not that bad. Okay. I don't. I don't uh, use an exorbitant amount of water. We were using a huge amount of water, and we couldn't figure out where it was going. Turns out it was a gigantic leak. I mean, that was like a pipe for how long? Just, like, months. It was just going. Uh, and we we're like, what the fuck? We were getting like fined by the city. And I was like, I know we're not. This is not the fucking Huntington Gardens. This is what's happening. Uh, Stallone got in trouble. Oh, Stallone and a few celebrities for using too much water or something. They got in trouble by the city or was it water or maybe too much power? What's too he, much electricity going on in your wait, house? Wait, but if you're solar, are you solar? I'm not solar. Are you solar? Yeah. Our, our power bill is five bucks. It's amazing. My we can, electricity bill, my power is yeah. probably fifteen hundred a month. Well, maybe it's something to think about. But let's talk about your uh, my work, your workaholicism. Yes, it's not great. Does I your mean, wife like it? No, not really. It gets a little bit to be a grind for my poor wife because everything is shot in Vancouver and Atlanta and yeah. other places, and uh, it's really. I mean, it's too bad that the. I mean, I love shooting here. Believe you me. I know. It's great. Uh, but this is the nature. These are all terrific problems. But right. uh, yeah, no, she doesn't like it when I'm gone. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't like it either. So I, if we were without, you know, with kids that were, you know, if we could take them around, we would do it. But they're, they're teenagers and they're like, hey, you want to go to Atlanta for a couple months? No. No, I have my friends here, my school here. Yeah. And, why would uh, I do that? It's nice here. What am I going to just sit and what, what, what am I going to do? Yeah. So, well, you do your career. Yeah. Well, you leave what at about my career? four in the morning and come home at seven. Yeah. No, it's not going to happen. That doesn't sound good. Now, you've been married 27 years. My, yeah. My, this, this, yeah. This December is the. 30th anniversary of kind of our first date are you serious yeah it's crazy what are you gonna do do you have any ideas of what you're gonna do for your 30th anniversary of when you met uh uh pro i'm nothing gonna buy a truck probably you're gonna buy a truck for yourself yeah 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 um she she can ride she can use it she can go shotgun uh i'll probably take her on a date we'll go out to jeffrey's no i'm kidding. what was the first date where we went to uh, the Swingside Cafe in Fremont, uh, the neighborhood of Seattle. So you're not going there. You're not going to fly it's her out to of Fremont. business. <laughs> it's out of business. I know. I I figured. I looked it up, and it uh, had gone out of business like five years ago. It was great Italian food. It was an old house. I think the house is now um, eighteen micro uh, apartments. Jeez, what's happened? Do you remember? Tell, don't don't be bullshitty. Uh oh do you remember looking that, at no, her and go kind of going wow wait a minute i'm i'm really like th this could be it this could be the one yeah well it was like you know it was we had she's from I, she was a mail order from russia <laughs> <laughs> here we go can't even get serious and, <laughs> can't even get serious and i had 90 days <laughs> to decide i had to do this oh when i first met her uh, I was like, oh man, I wonder if someone as attractive of, as her would actually spend time with me. Really? Yeah. And, uh, and then she did. And I was like, oh my gosh. And, uh, and then I was like, let's go on a date. And she agreed. And, uh, I, I had called my friend Kim, uh, Kim O'Neill. It's now Kim screen now lives on Bainbridge, Washington. And Bainbridge is the home of... Kurt Cobain. Pickleball. Oh. That's where it started. Oh, in the wow. 70s. That's very... Yeah. So there's a little fun fact. People now make, you know, treks out there and leave burnt offerings at the at the foot of the original. <laughs> it's now just Pickleball a arena. flat part of the forest. Um, and uh, I remember thinking, I have to use all my powers, all my charm, all everything I've got to and try to get her to like me. So we, I took her on a ton of dates with money I did not. I had been in a Ford Aspire commercial. They had this crappy car called the Aspire. I think Ford would agree it wasn't the greatest <laughs> offering. Now you could say that. Yeah, uh, they got uh, blown away by the Neon, the Dodge Neon at the time, oh. and similar. Anyway, I didn't. I was like, oh, I'm going to make all this money off this commercial, and I just started spending, you know, like putting everything in my credit card, and then. I got this one big check. Finally, I was like, I, and I got the money back. So, uh, thank God. Thank you, Ford. And thank you, Aspire. Yeah, the Ford Aspire. I see him once in a while. They're not in great memories, shape. right? You don't see him at the, you know, the Peterson. But anyway, uh, yeah, she agreed long ago, and I dragged her down here. 
uh and here we are <laughs> well let me ask you this is this too personal how long how many dates before, Six in. before you made love oh um we were doing it no yes i'm not gonna tell you that why not i don't know it just seems weird really yeah i'm not gonna i mean don't you feel like i was like ah, you, 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 well i mean was it fast or did you take a long time we to get were to know each very other very we i was really took my time i took yeah i wasn't gonna mess this one up you know good I take my because i really liked her and continue to really like her and so i was just like mm. and that uh, is did you were you was she uh, were you a little bit like uh almost i shouldn't do anything i just and she's like yeah i'm not gonna do any yeah i was just like i'm just gonna be a gentleman the nicest guy and hopefully That's so she'll sweet. like me and yeah it wasn't like a yeah it was, i was just like i'm gonna try this is i'm gonna use all my power and what was the that, the moment you were like i i definitely want to live the rest of my life with this woman i still haven't made up my mind <laughs> uh but uh <laughs> you dick Ooh, 27 uh, years man I well, oh, well, I was I don't know. I was just pretty sure I it didn't I didn't have like there wasn't like a was come to Jesus moment where I was like she's the one. It was just kind of like oh, I'm never going to stop liking this person and oh, yeah. I, a lot of the people I this is going to sound really great. Uh I didn't date people for a long time. I never had a sit long I had never yeah. had long. That's honesty. Friends. Yeah. Okay. And it was always like, uh, I was with them for like two weeks. And then I was like, I got to spend like two months trying to figure out how to break up with them. Yeah. And I was just like, eh, what am I going to do? And then this, I was the just, worst feeling. I was like, she, I'm not annoyed by her at all. And she's not annoyed by me. So this is love. And, uh, I mean, she's really annoyed with me most of the time now, now but, yes. uh, uh, but yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm, yeah, that, that, uh, I was, yeah, I was just like, fuck, I can't believe how much I like spending time with this person. And then we were, yeah, then it just never stopped. And then I asked her to marry me after two, oh, we got, we were married in two years. And everyone. You lived together? No. First? No. And that, people say that's not a bad thing to do, live with them and then see how they are and then maybe get married. But you said, you know what? I'm, I'm good. Yeah. I mean, I think it can cut both ways. So, it cuts some both ways. It, uh bread no no so, <laughs> uh uh miami sound machine i think no i don't think so yeah uh, uh, dirk uh, no i think it's cuts um, both no. ways i think it's gloria stefan no no it's not. i'm right i'm right no, he said it he it's, looked it it's up the arrhythmics <laughs> it's uh it's uh falco Inside of You is brought to you by Shopify. If you don't have Shopify, I don't know what to tell you. It, to me, is, is the best. It is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Um, it's truly unbelievable. I have Shopify. I've worked with Shopify on both the podcasts. They're still the go-to. It's so easy to put your products on there. And I have a little scale, and I weigh you know things that I want to sell. And... Um, Everything's there. You upload pictures. It's so easy to use and navigate and see what um, see what products doing better than others. So you can say, "All right, well, I'm not going to do this product anymore." And uh, it tells you all that. It gives you all the um, statistics. It's right there. Shipping is so easy. Uh, they do really everything for you from the launch your line shop stage to the first real life store stage all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage shopify is there to help you grow whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person pos system wherever and whatever you're selling shopify's got you covered i've got so many products i have t-shirts and i got uh you know, Smallville stuff, and uh, it's pretty amazing. Once you start selling, Shopify makes getting paid simple by instantly accepting every type of payment. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout up to 36% better compared to other leading commerce platforms and sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's extensive help resources are there to support your success every step of the way. 
Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash inside, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash inside now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash inside. Uh, I got a friend, well, Boyd and Brad, these two guys I work with, they are, it's insane how they, they could... And I, my perfect example is like they'll bring up Turk 182, like the movie. They'll, like, they'll name the director and who wrote the score. That's crazy. It's. Yeah, yeah, I wish I could do that. And I should know a lot of these directors. Like if you said who directed this, I should know it. No. But I'm not very good with that. There's different. It's different smarts. Is it? Like there's like you see people. Some, you know, like, you, like the Jeopardy smarts is recalling facts quickly. Are you good with that? It depends on sometimes it really depends some sometimes i'm fast as hell and other times i'm like yeah, this can't. guy said give me liberty or give me death uh I, I would say uh roy Orbison. i'm gonna go with that okay it might have been patrick henry uh patrick henry revolutionary war oh i thought that was the guy that built the S- city <laughs> He built a city on rock and roll. <laughs> what are the? Oh, here it is. Uh, no, no, sometimes I'm quick, but uh, what am I saying? Because I, you know, we all know very smart people that cannot do that. Yes, that don't, I, just don't. So have, that's a wit. That's a, that's witty. That's a form of intelligence. Well, yeah. I mean, you may not be quick off the draw, but you could design the Golden Gate Bridge or something. Mm. so you or you may you, seem like uh why can't i recall that why can i not put that together because i guess what it's not that it's, important it, well, yeah it, it was never with you it never it never was like uh, people who love fantasy football and i'm into fantasy football leagues and it drives me out of my brain i the fact that i'm like now i'll go sit at a computer and move words around that's not that fun to me <laughs> so i have my friend boyd <laughs> boyd does it again uh, yeah, I like I do that thing. I do this thing called Prize Picks. There, uh, it's it's an app for sport for game, you know, for uh, you know, putting money down, and it's a blast. Oh. I actually love it. Now, are you betting actual money? Yes. Oh well, but not a lot. It's like twenty bucks, twenty but it's sixty. Fa- it's fantasy. Football? It's fantasy. Yeah, it's like, I can. It's but anyway, I'm not, I don't know that much. Listen, you know what's awesome? Can about you hear this? No, I still hear that mm. water. Is that your? I still hear the water. <sighs> Let me let me say this. I'm talking to you for 15 oh, minutes. The Lost Boys is my favorite thing. Oh, the signed Lost Boys VHS tapes. I that saw was... that movie mm, no no less than eight times in the theater. You I, loved it that much. I bought a black like trench coat, my friends. It's pretty good. I <laughs> almost bought a script uh, signed by them all during. By the... the way, do you want me as just for fun? Jason's a good friend of mine, and uh, Kiefer's become a friend. No way. Yep. I just had dinner with them like four days ago. Can you get Weasts? Um, yes, who played Billy? No. no. The mom, Diane Weast. Oh, Diane Weast. Who was so good though, with the uh, scenes I don't know with her. what's his name. But I can get you a, something signed. Oh, fuck yes. Why don't, you, why don't we print, find a script online or something? I'll do that in a heartbeat. And get it, and I will get it signed immediately. Are they nice people? They're, they're so nice. I met Kiefer a while ago, uh, and he seemed very nice. He's very nice. His acting skills are pretty remarkable. You know what's funny? I, I mean, ha- they're all remarkable. I asked him the other night. I just said, uh, you know, because he plays music and he tours and stuff. And I'm like, do you love music more than? He's like, you know what? I, uh, I love them. I love acting. I, I love it. I love being on set. I love, I just, I mean, he really was, pa- like, I was like, it was just a, I go, you still, you like, and he just went into the zone of like passion. And I was like, yeah. holy shit, I wish I felt like that. Do you feel, are you pretty passionate about everything you do? Do you, do you love it? Or is it, uh, some of it you love, some of it, you, it it's work. Uh, I, I would love acting if it all started at 11 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and ended at four. And ended at four. No, I'd be willing to go like seven. I did a movie where I shot it at night and I was like, this is perfect. Oh, this that was is, the horror movie. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, get to work at seven and I'm all awake and I can stay up all night and then go have breakfast and then fall asleep for six hours. So you like that? I liked that a lot. I don't like, I, I, that's the yeah. only thing that bothers me. 6 a.m. Me. to like 7.30 6, at night. It's just, and then you get home and you're learning. I mean, it's great. And, and you're learning more. 
Yeah, and I, that's just when people like, oh, Hollywood, you guys just uh, have, I was like, nobody works harder than us. Now, and that's all I'd be like, when the, like Teamsters will drive off the road falling asleep and they had to change the rules and I, because they need to get them hotel room so they don't fall asleep while driving. And I was like, and, I, and so I'm always, I'm always defending. Oh my gosh, they're the first ones there, the last ones to yeah. leave and they've like worked the hardest yeah, they're and the, or the people that like show up and set up all the food and everybody. Yeah, it's, everybody. And, they, and it, it takes this great wonder. That's what I think. Yeah, it's the greatest business of all. I really do fucking love the business. And so when it's something I when I'm having fun doing it, I still can't believe people pay us to do it. Like, yeah, like I have no discernible skills other than. Have you heard of pickleball? OK, second time I mentioned it. And uh, no, <laughs> uh, uh, but I can't believe it. so anyway that all said it's i i do love it i don't like being away so much but i do it's all i ever wanted to do i don't i'm not one of those dickheads that gets on set and just pissed because <laughs> you yeah know, you, you, well, you don't seem like, like that guy yeah but you know you, like they don't want to be there yeah you're like why you don't why have to you, do this yeah why are you doing it yeah and then they're like well i'm getting paid a lot well if you're getting paid a lot you should be happy right you know what it comes down to they're not happy Mm -hmm. a lot of these people aren't happy that's what i was i was kind of uh in a roundabout way of getting to that point where i see uh you know there's a lot of people that just don't look happy with what they're doing you were talking about brando maybe he wasn't happy yeah i think it's obvious he wasn't happy he just uh but did you ever have that that feeling where you didn't feel like you were a happy person and you go how do i become a happier person i think if you deal with your shit if you go to therapy and make sure you're okay that, yeah that's helpful which is what i had to do because I, during the pandemic i began to have a lot of ang i mean i think i had anxiety in general but i was like oh this is not a feeling i've ever had before like where i'm like we're like anxious for no reason that i can figure out other than there's a worldwide pandemic happening <laughs> and yeah, um, yeah. and so i was like oh i should go take care of this and you know find out other things but no i i think you're right you can tell when people are on sets that are just miserable and you're like so sorry that this job you accepted and you know you, you we've all worked with them but i'm sure that's in every single line of work or maybe not i mean yeah no i, I mean i you know usually people are doing they hate the jobs they're doing because mostly they're not getting paid well or treated fairly or you know they're yeah. going same kind of bullshit thing this cyclical redundant like you know this is my life yeah and that sucks and i always say like, well you know try to do something fun on the side try to do something you're passionate yeah about. try to you know but it doesn't make as much sense when you're making a killer amount of money like you know studio heads and you know yeah big conglomerate uh ceos and all these people who have everything and they're it's just, and you have to think well they just weren't happy before that's right yeah and they think, just weren't happy before i think is there some cutoff point with money like they figured out when like, do you need enough one when, when it, there's a tipping point where it becomes too much of a burden and i forget what that i mean that's I, i'm sure it's not across the board but like when you read a thousand times, they're like, they won $50 million in the lottery. And three years later, half their family was dead and they had <laughs> lost all the money. You know, it was just like, oh, what a terrible time they had. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. No, I, I, it just it's hard to understand. I've always been like, you know. All right. How much do I have to live? I could live for this long. I remember even when I was living in New York. All right. You can you can get through this month. Oh wow, you have three months of rent paid. It was two hundred thirty dollars because I live with three guys in a one bedroom. Okay, you have this. This is food. This is oh my gosh, you have like two hundred dollars in the bank. You're all right. This is good. And then all of a sudden, but then as I got you know luckier and started making more money, it never stopped. It was like okay, let's if it all ended now, uh, this lifestyle I could live. And for me, it's just about being able to live a certain lifestyle where I could just I hang out with my friends and just enjoy things and i don't have to just br break even not dip in any savings and just i don't need to be a billionaire i don't need to make that much money i'm just you know i don't have a family like you but you know it's uh no i i agree like you'll of all things i saw this thing with dan blazarian who's that his name he's like a, a billion look at billionaire 
He's constantly like at the Bellagio shirtless. He's got a huge beard surrounded by models. And uh, he, he, if you see him right there, is he happy? So he was, he was talking about being unhappy. He was totally unhappy, but he was like, thought a Lamborghini was going to make me happy. I got a Lamborghini. And he was like, that was fun for four days. So I got rid of that. And he was like, it, he goes, it came down to like time and friends. And I'm like, that's, that's it. Because time is the ultimate, you know, commodity that there's not a lot of time. There's yeah, it goes by fast. I and know we say that all the time, but it's it's what the hell? He's ripped. He's got a fantastic body. He's a billionaire. But then you're like, you're happy. Fuck yeah, you, dude. You assume, and also we're taught as Americans, you know, like go get all this stuff. You know, make yeah. And then I go to my house. Then my house. I'm like, well, you have a shit ton of stuff, Joel. Well, look at you, all this stuff everywhere. <laughs> what are yeah. you doing with all this stuff? And yeah, it's fine. It, and then I'm a hoarder. I'm a hoarder of nice <laughs> things. Uh, no, Did you have a lot of things at your house? I do have a lot of things, like sign things and memorabilia. Oh no, I have cars. How I many like, cars do you have? Like eleven. 11 cars you yeah. have a big enough house to no keep... to not a, I don't, they're not all there. okay because i was like wow you you don't need to work then if you have 11 cars no and they fit I have firmly them, in your house i like them to fix them up and then get I, my goal like i like old cars and i like them being fixed up and then i can have them or sell them for more money than i bought them for so you buy a car for fifteen thousand and sell it for 50. Uh, I have a car about for 15 and I think it could sell it for a hundred right now. So for like, like I make sure they're nice. My friend is the real fixer. I like if you're if so, wow. certain, certain cars, if you, you can find them, like if you find a K five blazer right now from the 1970s, uh, you can buy that. You can be a bucket of shit for $5,000. If you do the whole thing, it will be, you'll sell it for 200 grand. So you have a buddy. So it's almost like you're, uh, buying a house for a good price and then you're going to do a fixer up and you you're, you're yeah, you work with this guy like so that. here's what we're going to do and this is what we i think we can make yeah so i'm gonna like, put the money you do the work and then we yeah get. i like the world i'm terrible at that work his name's brian corsetti he's a gm wearing a shirt uh corsetti corsetti cruisers um and he's really good at it like so we i have a lane i have a 1990 land cruiser that we completely redid put a new suspension in and put a corvette engine in it and made sure and just super nice and put these old stripes on it that Toyota's used to come with. And I look at it and I it makes me smile. That's awesome. It uh yeah. Does he work like could I pay him to fix yes. up something? Yes. Now would he do something? The, I, the yeah. problem is he's ex now with the pandemic and he's gotten more fame and he's because he's, he's damn good at it. Yeah. It has exploded. And he's expensive. Uh well, I mean, these are expensive, but you if you take the time to restore these vehicles they will make you money what about a 2002 dodge tony b signature signature series van mm -hmm. what do you want to do to it just bring it back i want to like repaint it like i want to get better what do they call it in between the tires rims rims you want like spinners no i just want nicer ones and i want where is this car it's in front of the house. Oh, what are you doing with it? You just love it. I drive my friend. I thought so many times of, of selling it, but it's got so much nostalgia and I use it to like, we went to delusion, which is a horror kind of like storytelling haunted house and, 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 uh, freaking wherever we went, it was about an hour and a half drive, but I drove them all there. It was fun. Sometimes I go to the olive garden. Sometimes I, uh, <laughs> I take them on trips when I directed my movie. I brought it out to Indiana. It was a production vehicle. Uh, it's it's we go on big hikes and I I you know take everybody in the. You don't the take van. the Rivian. Well, no, I mostly drive the Rivian. Right. But I feel like you know if I'm going to keep this van, I should make it a little bit nicer, paint job, things like that. You know. Yeah. And I want the like battery. Sam Raimi's car that appears in every movie he does, which I think is a Chevelle. Oh yeah, was that Chevelle in Evil Dead? Yes, and then he just restores it and to different, I think, dif different levels of restoration for whatever movie it is. Wow, I like that. So you know, uh, maybe like, yeah. is it going to shit? No, but I think it needs. You know, it feels like the battery is always dying. There's something wrong with it. Maybe that's more mechanical. You could probably put a new engine in it and it'll go forever. It's only got forty two thousand miles. 
and it's 21 years old but the the battery's dying well the battery always gives me problems if i just don't drive it for like a week oh well that will yeah that'll so happen. that's normal that's anyway enough about that's cars. normal for a car that age. Yeah. anyway so you do this thing it makes you happy it um you're already happy you have a beautiful wife you have a child you have a have good two, career yeah two, two, two childs boys. but i'm in a con- <laughs> i have two childs <laughs> B- boy childs and uh boy childs they uh no but that doesn't mean that i definitely you know like i'm I've ang- like later in life anxiety has popped up so i'm like oh i should go deal with that and so now i am does your wife notice when you're when you're anxious does she say you need to talk to your therapist she for years was like you should go talk to somebody and now i do and so, every week every week even if you feel like you have nothing to talk about you're gonna that's do it best that's time. your time that's the best time to go it is yeah i always tell ryan ryan and i were talking about that because he goes to therapy and it's like sometimes like i have nothing to say and then all of a sudden 15 minutes in you're into something you never thought you'd be in right it's yeah uh between because my eight adhd has been a very uh, not realizing that i really had it and now i kind of do i know that many people do and and uh, it gets i think it gets misdiagnosed but i was like as scattered as it gets and uh yeah so i'm trying to you know get that under control do you take anything for it i'm taking wellbutrin but i don't know if it's doing anything so i'm monitoring that to see if it's someone said uh, the person that prescribed it was like it can help and well if it doesn't you know i don't think it is well i don't take maybe it is that stuff but i take a a low dose of this stuff called vivance and it's not right for everybody but it's less addictive it's uh it's just like it helps you just focus does it so is it it, like adderall it's a a lot it's a uh it's like that, but it's Adderall is like just, I think, ter- terrible. Adderall makes you feel like shit, and I feel like I'm crawling out of my body, and it's intense. This is very smooth, and there's different I, – I, it's the only thing that works for me. And so if I wake up and I take it, I know I have about five or six hours of real focus. Huh. You know? All right. I've never – I've only taken Adderall once. I don't like it. Did you? I took it and fell asleep so i don't know i think i got tired too and i have like add like i think that means it's working because it you all of a sudden you're but it was no but it was too relaxing oh mine was just i what it didn't make me drowsy i was just like all right well my morning's gonna go on and and i'm just gonna lie down and and it was pleasant and but you weren't doing anything (laughs) i did my day but i but they're like people like i told them i took 45 milligrams because a person like you have it like you person was like you have it you need to take this and see and so i'd had a day when i didn't have to do anything because i didn't know what was going to happen right and it was 45 milligrams and i don't know if that's a lot or a little and uh so i was like okay that was an experiment you were one and done though i did well my adhd was just like all right well let's keep moving on guys let's keep running (laughs) let's get this i got a gerbil in my heart just running on this wheel is it hard for you to learn lines with the adhd uh it's well once i f- snap in it's a lot easier but, but to get there but to get there is yeah. like pulling it is like, i don't want to do i don't want to just sit here i want to go do this I yeah wanna... it's going to the, it's going to the dentist every time for me yeah uh once i i'm there it's better uh but yeah that's but then once it's in then i'm okay but learning it when you were doing that one show on nbc yes you had to learn lines constantly those you know, that, that was usually day of uh was that hard it once you start doing it a lot then it's like you know it's like practicing a sport where you're like oh what's it what can the we yeah they would just give you new lines we also yeah we scenes would change and lines would change so we would either we uh at first we got them in advance but then it it slowly shifted to not as it as we moved through the seasons and then we're getting them the morning of is it possible that um some brains just aren't designed for that because i always think i must be stupid because i can't i can't juggle like that i i i want to know my shit like even the other day when they're throwing me lines to say it was hard for me to i I need to see it and visualize and sit with it but they're throwing things at me and not oh i can't always just say what they said oh uh what is that like if you say he fell down the stairs and then I ran around the thing and I went through the thing. I'm like, all right, I already forgot it. Right. Well, you also, it, th- that's also, there's also a lot of other things happening. You're acting. You're probably, there's some sort of blocking happening. 
There's cameras pointed at you. You're in dialogue with someone else. So it's a lot. And then when that when that starts happening to me, if it's a long line, I'm like, say it again. <laughs> what are we doing? OK, that's what I'll OK. I'll say a version of that that I can say if it's not too long. Uh, but I also like improvising a lot. I like um, improvising. Yeah. But, but then you get on some sets where they're like, don't. Don't do that. Don't do. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. And so I yeah, I don't think it's. But I, like, yeah, I mean, I'm going to think about like, how do they remember all the, those lines in a play? I'm like, oh, well, they've had three months to rehearse it. The, uh, That's it. But the other thing I use is Line Learner, which is an app. So you can, I think there's a, now there's a number of different versions of the Line Learner, like uh, memorizing lines where you, it can read all the dialogue. It reads the dialogue. So reading the scene out loud with my phone is the way I do it. Is so it's like if there's lines going back and so forth. So they say a line to you? The thing says the line. And then, I mean, obviously I've looked at the line beforehand. So it's like, all right, that's the cue for that. The reason I'm saying that is that. Now it goes over to this character and it's all. So that really helps when, like, if it's a big scene. You know what I used to do on my phone is just read the scene as the other character and leave it blank. So I, for instance, if my line was, well, how have you been? And then two seconds, I've been so great. Then my, so nothing, I'm sorry, nothing yeah, for my line. Right. And I go, how you been? So great. Oh, well, that's awesome, man. What have you been? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, well, I went down to the very fuck. And I, I would just, that's how I would learn it. That's, yeah, that's what line learner is. But that's is, what but line yeah, learner is. But you don't have to do you that. Did. You could have designed that app. I could have, I did. But yeah. they stole it. That was mother. I mean, I, it, it is, yeah, I. It, you know when you get on sets where people are not prepared, which is really lame. And then, you know, yes. you, and then, or you're, you're on set with something that's really complicated. And then you're like, oh, well, that was very t complicated and it's hard to do. And so you cut them some slack. But, yeah. you know, when people show up not knowing their lines, it's like, oh, man. Here and we you've go. dealt with that. Yep. <laughs> so have you. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's tough. I think the only rules to sag are show up and know your line. Hit your I line. Hit your mark. Show up, know your lines. That's, that's all that's, you got to do. Yeah. That's your job. You can be super shitty and do those things. Yeah. Uh, or just not do those things at all. Yeah. Yeah, which is not great. What um, are you looking at? You look at, are we memorizing lines right now? Yeah, I'm trying to learn that. Do you have an Italian passport or Norwegian passport and a Canadian passport or any of those? I made them today, yes. Because you have Norwegian in you. you I, don't, have I have Norwegian and Irish, and then I was born in Italy. So you have a passport, you dual citizenship? No. But you I, could get it easily. I think I could because yeah. I have a birth certificate. Why don't you do that? ADHD, man. I, every time uh, <laughs> I had. I had, I was, son of a bitch. I was at the Delta desk at LAX and the woman was Italian. And uh, and I was like, oh, uh, and I could wreck I mean, I could tell. I was like, oh, you're Italian. And she was like, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, we started. And of course, I was like, I was born there. And she was like, you idiot. <laughs> Why don't you go get it? You can go get it right now. Yeah. And then I did. That easy. Yeah, uh, you you have to apply for it, but I think it would be okay. And then my mom's Canadian, so you can get that that too. It'd be a little harder, but you could do it. Uh, the, I was born before the United States recognized dual citizenship. I mean, mm. you could just walk into the consulate at that point or wherever you were and go, "Here's a Canadian baby," and then they would be like, "Great," and then you would walk to the American consulate, like, "Here's an American baby." Don't tell the <laughs> other. Don't tell any. Uh, <laughs> don't tell him, which is always <laughs> odd. But now they recognize it. You know, you uh, you could get, you probably get, honestly, don't, uh, you're a humble man. Mm -hmm. But how often do you get yeah. offers? Do you, would you say you get an offer a week for, for something? You mean like go, like for work or for like go do a, th go come to a golf tournament? Well, no, that doesn't count. Okay, good. But like, hey, we want you to host this show. Hey, we want, there's this role in this movie. Hey, there's, come speak at a college. Hey, we're going to pay you to do this. Do you get a lot of paying engagement offers a lot? I do. Yeah. If it's long as it's like, as you said, like whether it's stand up or like there's hosting gigs and then there's pro like corporate gigs that I host. Uh, and you like that stuff? I do like that stuff. I find it fun. Yeah. I like, I like hosting a gig like that. Um, I, I like, they're like, you're going to, it's for a company retreat and you'll host the dinner. And I like that stuff. I'll be like, great. I mean, I'm such an extrovert that, yeah, I mean, I still get, I'm like, you'll pay me money to go do that. Oh, great. All right. See, I love that. And I love that about you that you're, it, it's, you have, you don't have any ego. 
Like, I mean, I'm, 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 huge you have, ego. you have Look a huge ego. Yeah, yeah you're laying on. on my couch. You have a fucking big ego. Yeah. Now, but you're such a humble dude. Now your legs are spread, and that's a nice package there. Thank you. Look, it ripped at one point. I had to sew it together. Did you really you like those jeans that much? Yes, John Elliott. You know what them. I feel right now when I'm looking at you spread eagle on my mm-hmm. couch? I'm thinking of you being a tight end in college. Yeah, this is how I. This is, this how, is how I attacked guys. This would have been your crotch sport. first. <laughs> I just leapt into the air. This is what you're hit them in the face with my the old scissor slam. Yeah, I just got them, and then just <laughs> broke their necks. But you don't like the thing is, people could call you and say, "Hey, there's this acting gig," or they could say a host gig or a stand up. You are you could do anything really, and you do. Yes, I just do them all mediocre. No, have you ever so been you- mediocre or lousy in something? Yeah. Most- What's one thing you could think of and go? I just wasn't great in that. I was not. I did a movie with Robin Williams, which was the biggest one of my dreams come true. And I was like, I think I was fine. I wasn't too. I, I was like, I think it was just perfectly fine. And I wasn't too happy with it. Uh, but Robin was great. To get down on yourself? Yo, yeah. You do? Oh, fuck. Yes. Do you get I, down on yourself about everything if you're less than what you think you can be? Um. Yeah, it's like with if i yeah my wife like sometimes with con, like stand up sometimes i get really pissed about like oh that joke didn't work this one did that one kind of didn't i lost them there i got them back there uh i'll get real and and then you, you relive know, it oh yeah i self-loathe and uh it get pretty neurotic about performances and that's why i don't really watch them which it, this is the there there you go lumex camera this is the height of my neurosis where i I don't really like watching me perform uh uh, watching me i don't either gosh do you do you do you get down on yourself oh yeah do i get down on myself oh man yeah uh i'm 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 the worst at getting down on myself i i I, because i can see sometimes when i've watched myself i go wow like i've actually been able to say you're really good but then I remember how confident I was in that scene. And then I'll see myself and I'll go, yeah, but you weren't confident in that scene. I could tell you were a little nervous and you were just doing it. You were doing it. You know how to sell it, Mm. but you weren't in it. So I'll be really hard. Like, and sometimes I was like, why can't you just be like that all the time? Why can't you just be so confident and you see where it gets you when you have confidence and belief in yourself. It's yep. just, you can go so far. And when you don't, and it happens so often that it just hinders you from being, you know, meeting your potential. Right. And so that I get down on myself like that. And I go, what is that? Why, you know, is it the anxiety? Okay, I'll get on meds for that. Is it the ADD? I'll get on <laughs> meds for that. What else is there? Is there that magic thing? But honestly, it's it's just, you know, it's it's who I am. I think there's a neurotic person that's just living inside me and it's with a lot of other things a lot of other personalities not personalities that sounds schizophrenic but like no i know you mean you know what i mean there's just there's a couple of things that that are going there's that confidence and that ego and that insecurity and that sadness and that all these things into one which makes me so if i'm a little bit not great in that give yourself a break all right next one yeah it'll be fine but it's uh, but yeah i i I no, like I'm, I'm so, there all yeah. the time. Yes, it's, you are too. Yeah, and I'll get like I got like if it's an act, I get really wigged out about acting sometimes, and have I have a coach that I'll work with to to work it out and to really fly. If it's a movie that I know that you know like it's coming up and I've got some time, and I'm so idiot that I book this. Guy, his name's Jim Anzad. He's amazing, and I'll be like. Jim, uh, my I am procrastinating. I need you to come over for two hours, and we're gonna bang this thing out and work on it, and it helps a lot. It's still though, yeah, I know exactly what you mean by getting to scenes, and I'm like, oh, you really, we're fine, okay. I can see Good that. for you. Yeah, well, you, you really well. We'll get him. We'll get him on the next one. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, but you know that. Then, then you know, like, oh, this house I'm in was bought by this thing that I do. Okay, you can reality check. Yeah, all right, so you you've done it. You you're okay. You've been okay at this, and d- d- you you'll probably be good again at some point. All right, that's that's healthy. That's like I, I think you're right. I think it's like, uh, 
that's what I do, by the way. I say, hey, you have a house, you have dogs, you have great friends, you have, you know, you have, you can afford to do things. You've done some great work. It's, it's okay to fail. It's okay to bomb. It's okay not to always yeah. be great. It's okay to be vulnerable. So, and I keep telling myself that. I'm telling you that, but I also. Then, you know, no, then you go through it again. You go through it again and again. And so it's like, that's not, not going to stop. And yeah. you always hear these things about when, when you're dying or you're really old and people are, you know, well, what's your uh, what's what's your regret? <laughs> and you know, the old guy's like, I, I didn't hang out with my friends enough. I didn't uh, I cared too much. <laughs> <laughs> but he's always got to be kind of a like a like a, a like a New York Italian. No, it's uh, stereotype. Uh, it's what's thing? his name? It's like so. The other thing is, you had you said he he did it with his left hand, uh, but he was right handed. Michael Douglas? Colombo. Uh, <laughs> you fuck. I don't know. It's a bad Colombo. Denzel Washington? Denzel. No, Colombo. Um, right. So you go through it. I think no, when people like, I don't have any regrets. I'm like, I have a lists of them. I can show you like, oh, I could have done that. <laughs> you know that joke? Uh, maybe we cut it or not, but the guy goes up to a, an old man. He goes, how old are you, sir? He says, I'm 105. He says, oh, my God, look at you. What's your secret? He goes, excuse me. Says, What's your secret? He says, I sucked a dick once. <laughs> no, no, no. Your secret to living a long life. He <laughs> says, oh, oh, carrots and cabbage. That's great. <laughs> Where did great. you hear that? I don't know. I just heard it. What type of comedy do you enjoy? What makes you laugh? Most recently, what we do in the shadows. Uh, I have, I'm it's so good. I, it is astonishing. I can't, like like it is really something. And it is I, really funny. I wanna, I, I want to be on that. I want to be on that I too. I tested for it, and obviously they pick people who are way different and way better. Yeah, but like I I love them. You know who I? Which I, ones you test? For? You're gonna you're gonna laugh. Nandor. Oh well, you would have been. I mean, I had a little beer and it was it was just different. But it makes sense. He looks like he's from Romania. Yeah, and like I mean, he's just he's amazing. So I, I, it's you know, but I, I felt like I did a good job and I had fun doing it. Yeah, and so I support the show. That's yeah. Uh, and then other, th what fine? makes you laugh? Hallmark movies. That's a lie. You're right. They, they don't make you laugh. No, they make you cry. They're not that funny. Uh, What's funnier, Caddyshack or Vacation? Caddyshack. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, Vacation's very funny. But Caddyshack, you've got all these heavy hitters at once operating together. Did you ever ask Chevy for an autograph? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I had never seen that side that everybody saw until, until... I, I went to do a signing and Beverly D'Angelo is a good friend of mine. Oh. And she goes, hey, let's go take a picture with Chevy. And it was like behind the scenes or whatever. And he was just sitting there and say, like, hey, this is Michael. You remember him? Blah, blah, blah. The, you know, you met him a few times. Is it, you know, he's a friend of mine. We're going we're gonna, to let's take a picture. And I was like, I, we don't have to take a picture. I was like, let's take a picture. And so we take a picture and uh, I go, hey, it's OK. I'm very uh, forgettable. And he goes, don't talk in my face. <laughs> and I go, I, I, I went like this. I go, are you kidding me? And Beverly goes, shh, don't. Jeez, it's a, so you saw the good side of him. Jeez, did you see some nastiness? Oh my, yes. Like the worst of the worst? Fuck, yeah. Like me, I'm not fucking doing this. There's a chapter in the book that I wrote about fighting him, on how to fight him. I have to it's, read this book. Yes, we we have a full doubt. What is the book? Uh, Thanks for the money. Thanks for the money. Yes. And you have... I, 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 we are step by step on how to fight Chevy Chase. I, and it, fist whatever. fight or verbal fist did you fight fists multiple times you fought him i mean we we there was pushing and shoving yeah really yeah it was it was um you would have killed him though. it was advanced horse play you know horse play was it so was it fun and then it always turned into sex but it wasn't fun it wasn't fun at all like it was like your adrenaline was going like i'm gonna hit this older guy it uh would get a little contentious yeah it would get to this point where i'm like okay would the producers just like jump in i'd, I'd get i'd get well i got in trouble one time because i injured him yeah i've dislocated his shoulder <laughs> i'm reading this book immediately yeah no and the funny thing like i've brought like people like uh, there's an entire chapter about him in the book <laughs> yeah did he ever respond to you about it no no. Think he ever read it? Nope. I don't think so. Do you think he knows that he could be an asshole? 
I would assume so. I, I would think so. Uh, yeah, no, the guy is, yeah. I mean, he, and the, he just did Mark Maron's podcast and it made all these headlines because he was like, I didn't find the show funny and didn't want to be there. And then my response was like, yeah, well, feelings mutual and, about how, your attitude and you didn't have to be there. Don't, like, he, he was like, I didn't want to be around those, the table with those people. And then, like, Gillian even said, well, it was like, feelings mutual. And it was like, yeah. you didn't, this was not, I was like, this was not a prison sentence. No. You didn't, we were not uh, conscripted into a war. You were being paid a lot of money and getting free food all day long. <laughs> so yes. you could just walk away. And he, you know, and I was like, so what? Was he at least nice in the beginning? When I first met him, he I was like, hi, I'm Joel. And he's like, mm-hmm. Like, you know who I am. <laughs> Jeez, good start. Good fucking start. Yeah, no, I mean, someday, and then there'd be days it was good, but it was always... Get yeah. me out of here. Why, why don't we shoot now? What's taking so long? Fuck, these lines suck. Oh, yeah, I was like, the, I, not, these aren't funny enough for me to memorize. That was, yeah. They have to feed them lines, I'm sure, yeah. Yeah, no, it was a whole thing. This yeah. has been awesome. Thank you for having it's me. It's so fun. By the way, if you could go back in time, would you uh, maybe punch Chevy in the face? <laughs> Knock him out? Oh, At I'd one be, point? Well, your... no, I'd be sued. So, you know, that would... Well, not if he was handling you, too. Well, yeah, but um, if I could go back in time, I'd just, you know, kill Hitler. Mm. But you, what if you could only go back like 10, ten years? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Uh, I think I'd buy a fleet of rental cars and then sell Fix them, them up sell them right, after, right there sell them right after the uh, pandemic uh <laughs> no i now uh, that's all right yeah i don't think i would yeah I, I think you know like dislocating his shoulder did that inadvertently however you know yeah he wanted me to punch him as hard as i could so that's why really punch, punch me punch punched, me. punched him in the in the hand with a left yeah and then he went down <laughs> really <laughs> we're in a scene a boxing scene so yeah. So he said, hit me. Yeah, I was like, you're not hitting me. I'm like, well, all right, if you really want me to. And it was a good punch. Yeah, I mean, it was a left. So I'm a right-handed when it comes to punching. So, yeah. And it still got him. Still got him. But that could also be. You're a be strong me. man, Joe McGill. Thank you very much for saying that. Um, all right. This um, has been a joy. Oh, I just got I can pick my kid up at three. This works out perfectly. This is perfect. This has been a great time. Ryan, did you have fun? He loves you. We, we both love you. We were excited about you coming back. I would, let's come on my podcast when I get one. I'm, I'd love to do it. If I'm, if I'm, I just got a cookie of some steaks at some point. See, why never around to do it anymore? So it's great. We'll make time. Do you eat steak? Yes. All right. Yes. Love you. Love you. Thank you. I love you, Joel. Thank you. That was, uh, that was a fine interview. I, I want to have him on for the rest of my life or the rest of this podcast's existence. He's great. I would love to sit on the couch with him, but, it, you know. He's a big guy, we'll so get he, he needs the couch. He's not the biggest we've ever had. Who's the biggest? Nicholas Holt was pretty big. Nicholas Holt was very big. Pete Holmes is a good 6'6". Six, six. Pete Holmes, yeah. I'm going to be in his podcast. I'm going on there in April. Fun. Yeah, that'll be fun. Just on the couch with him of the mic. That'll be, that'll be a good time. <laughs> and a little shout out to my friend Katie Sackoff's um, podcast. Um you should listen to it. Just go on her Instagram and you'll find the links there. I'm on, I'm a guest on hers as well. It was really good. And uh, yeah, a lot of stuff. I'm doing a um, interview with Screen Rant, which is cool. Um, trying to get into some more voiceover work. So that'll be fun. And writing a lot, Ryan. I'm writing a ton. You've been telling me. I'm I just can't stop writing. Envious. And I don't care about the outcome. I'm just excited about them. I'm writing a horror movie. I'm writing a uh, a series. I'm writing a um, a dark another series, which is really dark um, uh, about a serial killer, and just doing all these different things. And uh, I'm enjoying it. And I think the process for the first time is is uh, is nice. I'm enjoying the process. I'm not worried about the end results. I'm going, hey, I like this. How how can we make this the best it can? And then give it a shot and see what happens. Um, that is until I'm broke and nothing's selling, and I need <laughs> something to sell. Uh, but uh, thanks for listening today. And um, you traveling anytime soon, Ryan? Uh, me, no. Yeah. No. Are you, enjoying the, are you enjoying the Talkville podcast? I am. Are Maybe you I'll join you in DC. I don't know. Huh? <laughs> Maybe I'll join you in DC. Dude, I don't know. I would love if you joined in DC. You could be in the Smallville Nights and you can get up on stage and read scenes with me and Tom. I have, I have, I have tons of friends in DC too. Go to DC. 
I'll hook you up. All you right. Go to the con and come to Smallville Nights and hang out with me in Welling a little bit. Sure. For a day. I haven't seen Welling in person in oh, well over a year. In Welling, in Welling over, over a, a year. In Welling <laughs> over a year. Um, but, uh, and it, by the way, if you haven't listened to the uh, Mark Shepard interview, you must. He talks about dying five times a couple months ago, and it is extraordinary. It really is. Even if you don't know him, um, it's a fascinating story. So do that. All right, let's get into the top tier patrons. These are the folks that really give back to the podcast. They get their name shouted out every episode. They get packages from me and notes from me and Zooms. I'm doing a Zoom with the top tiers uh, today, actually, um, which would have been uh, a week ago. (laughs) <laughs> if you think about it all right top tier is patreon.com slash inside of you if you want to give back and support the podcast we need you um and uh, shout out to everybody i met in north carolina at the mad monster party con that was a freaking treat you know Kiefer sutherland i'm hanging out with him and i become buds with him and uh, name drop and he uh I was I was talking and Welling says, you know, you should bring your guitar. You always say you're going to bring your guitar. I go, I know I need to buy a travel guitar. So Kiefer then says, uh, well, I just I forgot mine. And because he's a musician, he he tours all over. And he says, um, I bought one right when I got here at this guitar shop. It's brand new. It's an eight hundred dollar guitar, a Taylor mini. And he I, gave it to me. I got one of those. He gave it to me. That's though. awesome. They're so good. It sounds so good. And I, I go, you know what? You're signing this. That's really nice. So he too. signed the back of my guitar. He's like, you know, he put, hey, brother, uh, you know, something really nice. And, That's uh, super nice. Super nice. And my other friends like, well, he's worth $100 million. What's the big deal? I go, dude, it's not about that. It's about that he went out of his way to give me something that was really nice. No one gives me things. I mean, sir, patrons send me things all the time. But also as far as travel guitars go, though, that one is. Ooh, I, I'm actually playing with it. I could play with it. Yeah. It's comfortable. Yeah. It's cute. It is cute. Yeah. Top tiers. Nancy D, Leah, and Kristen. Little Lisa. Yukiko, Jill E, Brian H, Nico P, Robert B, Jason W, Sophie M, Raj C, Jennifer N, Stacy L, Jamal F, Janelle B, Eldon Supremo, 99 more, Santiago M, Leanne P, Maddie S, Belinda N. Dave H. Wait, wait. Dave. Dave. Dave H. Dave Dave H. H. Hello, Dave. Dave. I miss you, bud. Hopefully, you're going to be on the uh, Zoom today or last week. Brad D, Ray H, Tabitha T, Tom N, Talia M, Betsy D, Rhiannon C, Cordy K, Dev Nexon, Michelle A, Jeremy C, Brandy D, Mr. M. Eugene and Leah, how's the baby? Mel S, Christine S, Eric H, Shane R, Andrew M, Oracle, Amanda R, Kevin E, Stephanie K, Jam and J, and Leanne J, Luna R, Mike F, Stonehenge. Brian L, Jules M, Jessica B, Kaylee J, Brian A, Marion Louise L, Romeo the Band, Frank B, Jen T, Nikki L, April R M, Randy S, Oral P, Rachel D, Melissa H, Nick W, Stephanie and Evan, Charlene A, Don G, Jenny B, John, Jennifer R, Tina E, N G, Tracy, Tasha S, Keith B, Anna M, Waffles, 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 Waffles is new. A few newies here. Um, thank you guys for, uh, all that you do on Patreon, and, um, I appreciate you and, you know, patrons top tiers, uh, get to ask questions and, uh, for the guests and, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a big family it's become on Patreon. So join patreon.com slash inside of you. Uh, that's it for the podcast today. I uh, appreciate you. Love you from the Hollywood Hills in, uh, California. I'm Michael Rosenbaum. I'm Ryan Tails. You are. I am. A little wave to the camera and, uh, Hey guys. Please be good to yourself. Um, most things are nothings. So try to think about that. A lot of people think about these little things that aren't that important and they stress. But most things, Ryan? No things. Are no things. Nothings. No things. That's correct. All right. <laughs> Whatever. We love you. We'll see you later. Peace. Peace.